Hi, so in this video, we're going to go over some basic usage in Sierra chart. We're going to talk about connecting to data, opening a chart, saving and working with chart books, and some basic drawing tools and adding studies to charts. So this is what Sierra chart should look like the first time you turn it on. And what we see here is all of the available windows that we can click on and drop down as well as the default control bar. So if we click on a window and then control bars, you can see that we can have up to eight different control bars and these control bars can be fully customized. So this is the default control bar here. When you see this box highlighted in green, it means that you're connected to your trading service or data feed. Let's go over to file and then data and trade service settings. This is where you're going to select your trading service to connect to. By default, you'll be connected to SC Data All Services, which is not a trading service. It's only the data that is being provided by Sierra Chart. So if we click on this to bring down the drop down menu, these are all of the supported trading services that Sierra Chart supports. And one thing to note that is important is no matter which trading service you connect to, any data you subscribe to through Sierra Chart will be fully supported no matter which trading service you're connected to. So for the purpose of this video, let's stay connected to SC Data All Services. Remember to press Apply All and then OK. Now let's just talk briefly about connecting and disconnecting to the data feed. So I'll click on File and go down to the bottom here. Disconnect and connect to data feed. You can see that there's also shortcuts for these functions. Control and F11 at the same time will disconnect you from your data feed and F11 on its own will reconnect you to your trading service. So let's just briefly test that out. If I do Control F11 to disconnect and then F11 to reconnect. Now let's open up a chart and we'll talk about how to navigate some of the basic functions in the chart, in Sierra chart. In the default control bar, you can see we have find symbol right here. We can click directly on this button and it will bring us to all of the available symbols here. Or we can go to file and then open new historical chart or open new intraday chart. And find symbol is also here as well. So let's click find symbol. Now in this menu right here, this is all of the supported data by Sierra chart. So for this example, let's use a Forex chart. So we'll click on that to bring down the drop down menu. And now we can select our currency pair in this case. So let's use Euro US dollar. Now we can open up a historical chart, which is any chart with a time frame of one day or higher. Any chart with a time frame of less than one day will categorize as an intraday chart in Sierra chart. We can also open up a trading DOM. So let's open up an intraday chart and our symbol has loaded. Sometimes, depending on the amount of data you need to load, you'll see a message that says downloading historical data. And you just need to wait normally a few seconds for that to finish. So you can see that we have a one minute chart currently. Let's talk about some of the basic customization and basic things that you need to know when navigating a chart in Sierra chart. The first menu that you need to become accustomed with is the chart settings window. How to get there is very simple. We go up to chart then chart settings. You can see we can also press F5 to get directly to this menu. I would suggest memorizing some of these basic hotkey functions so that way you can navigate the platform quicker. So this is our chart settings window. In this menu it contains all of the basic and advanced settings that have to do with the chart that you've selected. This is where you choose the number of days to load, the tick size and price display format, volume at price multipliers, the time frame of the chart, as well as the graph draw type for this chart. There are three menus of advanced settings that we can cover in a later video. For example, if we wanted to change this one minute chart to a 15 minute chart, we could simply go right here to our intraday chart bar period and change this middle number here. As you can see, it's currently set to a one we can add a five right next to it. And now this will be a 15 minute chart. So let's hit apply and then okay. And you can see that our chart is now a 15 minute chart. Now, if we want to change the way our bars look, for example, we want candlestick bars, we go up to chart and then graph draw types and then select candlestick bars. 
Some of the most popular graph draw types are the open, high, low, and close bars, candlestick bars, as well as the line on close, if you just need a basic line. So we'll select candlestick bars here. Now, if we look up at our control bar, you can see here that there's a few buttons here that can allow us to change the time frame of this chart. So for example, if I click on one minute, it will switch us back to a one minute chart. We can click on 30 minute to switch over to a 30 minute chart. These time frame buttons on the control bar here can be customized to bring up any type of chart that is supported in Sierra chart, including range bars, point and figure, volume and tick charts, etc. So one very good feature here that's available is the ability to switch time frames with keyboard shortcuts for any chart in your chart book. So I've already showed you that you can customize control bars with the custom time frames that you want. And I'm going to demonstrate a keyboard shortcut now. So if I type the number five, and then the letter M, and then press enter, I'll switch this chart over to a five minute time frame. Now you need to make sure that the chart is selected before you start typing. So I'll do another one there 30 M, you can see that when I type, the characters appear on the top of the chart there. This is supported for any type of chart that is supported in Sierra chart. So let's say you wanted a 40 tick range chart, I'll type 40 R and then enter. This also works for point and figure tick charts, volume charts, etc. Now a few basic things in regards to the chart and the way it's displayed. Some traders, they need to organize their charts in a specific way. And oftentimes they will unattach their charts from the main Sierra chart window. The way this is done is by going up to window and then detach or attach window. And now this chart has become separate from our main Sierra chart window. So an example that a trader might do is they might keep their main Sierra chart window potentially even off their main trading screen. And then they will organize their charts and DOMs in a way that is effective for screen real estate. So now that this chart is unattached, I can place it any which way I want on my screen. So let's maximize it again and talk about the bottom scale here. So if we click and drag on the bottom scale, we can either increase or decrease the number of bars that is appearing on our screen here. So if I drag to the right, I'll be increasing the number of bars that I'm showing. Now, if we right click on the price scale of our chart, we can see the scale settings for the chart that we've clicked on. Now by default, the scale range is set to automatic. So it will adapt automatically to the price ranges that we're displaying here in the bars that we are showing. If we needed an independent or a constant range, we can also select that. We can go into the scale settings to specify even more specific settings. This is useful when you're using chart DOMs and you want them to stay at a constant range. For the charts, generally most users will prefer to keep this on automatic for charts. So now we're gonna talk about saving our chart books. When we have our charts laid out on our screen, they exist in something called a chart book. So we had a chart book appear and it's called chart book one by default. So now to save this chart book, you go up to file and then save as. Here we can change the name of our chart book and save it as something new. And then we click save. And now we have our chart book saved right here. So let's say for example, I close the chart book. It's going to ask you if you want to save any changes that were made to it. Normally you will select yes. Now let's say we wanted to open this chart book again, we can go to file, open chart book, or since we have it on the control bar here, we just click on open chart book. And then we'll go find the chart book and open it. If you want to have chart books open by default when you open Sierra chart, you go up to global settings, then general settings. Then right here where we have files to open on startup, you need to add the chart book here. And when you open Sierra chart, it will open all of the chart books that you've put in this menu in the order that you've put them in. Let's talk now about some basic drawing tools and adding studies to a chart in Sierra chart. So we have our chart. Let's go up to tools. Now in this menu, we can see these are the most commonly used drawing tools right here. And almost every single one of them has a shortcut already assigned to it by default. Now the first thing is here, in the top part of this menu, these are the things that we can do simply by clicking on the chart. So if we have this set to pointer, nothing's going to happen when we click on our chart, actually. If we have it set to our chart values or crosshair, when we click on our chart, we get to see the value of where we're hovering our cursor over. And you can see that on the right side on the price scale. If we have it set to the hand tool, 
we'll be able to move around our chart by clicking and scrolling our mouse. And there's also a function here. If you select zoom in, you click and drag and then click again to select an area you would like to zoom into on the chart. Let's talk about using basic drawing tools. I'll show you a few shortcuts that are very useful. So in the tools menu, these are all of the available drawing tools here. And there might be some more as well, but these are the important ones. So for this example, let's use a horizontal line. So we can click on the horizontal line here to bring it onto our chart, or we can use the configured shortcut, which is Alt and the number eight. So we'll click there, then we'll click on our chart, and you can see we have a horizontal line that is ready to be placed. A very useful shortcut is if you hold the Shift key while you have a horizontal line prompted, it will automatically snap to the low, close, open, or high of a bar, depending on where you're hovering your mouse. So let's say I want to place it right at the high of this bar, I just hover it right there while holding the shift key and then left click and I drop the line there. So let's create another horizontal line but using a keyboard shortcut this time. So I'll press the button alt and the number eight at the same time and then click on the chart and you can see that we have another line here. I wanna place this line right here so I'll hold shift and attach it to the low of this bar right here. Let's talk about erasing drawings now from our chart. So if we go up to tools again we can see here that we have the option to erase all non-text drawings as well as erase all text. So these are categorized as two separate things. This is a handy shortcut if you simply want to erase all of the non-text drawings on your chart. There is also an erase drawing mode that we can go into. If I press Alt and the number five, now I'm in erase drawing mode, meaning that if I click on any drawing, it will erase it. I'll press Alt and the number three to go back to the crosshair mode that I was in previously. Another one of my favorite drawing tools is the rectangle. We can use Control Alt 4 to bring this up. And we can also use the Shift key to snap this to certain areas of our price bars. So I created a rectangle here. Let's say I wanted to extend this. I can right click on this rectangle and then click on Extend Drawing. Now if I wanted to erase this rectangle, I can right click on it and then choose erase drawing. Or you can use the erase drawing mode if you need to erase many drawings one after another. And the last way would be by using shift alt L to simply erase all non-text drawings. These are some shortcuts that are useful when it comes to working with drawing tools in Sierra chart. Let's talk now about adding studies. We can go up to the top of our chart here, analysis then studies. These are all of the studies available by default in Sierra chart. Some of them are very complex, like a correlation coefficient or numbers bars. And some of them can also be simple, like a moving average. Let's add a moving average. So we click on the study we want, then we click right here on add. When we press apply, it will add the study to our chart. To configure our study, we double click on the study here. We can also have it selected and then click on settings. In this case, it's a simple moving average, so there's not many inputs involved with this study. In the case of a more complex study, there's gonna be more inputs here. So in this case, we have two inputs. Our input data for this moving average is based on the last traded price. Then the length of this moving average was set to 10. I'll change it to 21. When I press apply, it will work. We can also select what this study is based on. In this case, by default, it will be based on the main price graph. But this is to be used when you want to have studies that are based on other studies on your chart. This is one way that Sierra chart offers some pretty advanced capability to its users. If we need to configure the visual look of our study, we go up here to subgraphs. And this is where we can configure how it looks visually on the chart. So in this case, the color is here. The draw style is here. It's set to a line. It's a solid line and it has a width of one. We can increase the width and then hit apply to change that width right there. If we need the value of this study to be displayed on the price scale, we need to check this box right here and then hit apply. So in this video, we covered some basic usage of Sierra chart. In future videos, we'll go over some of the more advanced functionalities like customizing chart regions, control bars, overlaying studies, creating custom symbols, etc. Let's go into the chart settings of our chart. Then let's find another symbol here. I just want to demonstrate some other symbols that are available here. This is all data that is supported by Sierra chart. So if we scroll down here, we're going to go to market stats. 
This is data about market statistics. So we have the advanced decline ratios for the various stock exchanges here. Let's go all the way down to our tick indicator. So for example, the New York Stock Exchange tick, we can load this data in here. And there we have it. All right, that's going to cover it for this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.